everybody, Jen from Scrapping Under the Influence. I am here with a new project and tutorial for Country Craft Creations. Still using Doodlebug. <laughs> I am using the Doodlebug Hello Again um, for this album. So this is, um, the base of this album was one I had actually done a while back, but I had not done a tutorial for. So um, here we are. So on the front, I have, of course, done a shaker because you all know how much I love doing shakers and they're just fun and, you know, I can sit and do this for hours. I don't even know why. Anyway, <laughs> so this is made with one of the SVG files from um, Lori Whitlock's shop. Uh, Doodlebug releases cut files for pretty much all of their... Um, their lines and this one is available now which is awesome uh, ribbon from my stash the spine it is of course the easy or the the easy wrap album method with this wrap to the outside I did mat this before I wrapped it I'll go through that in the tutorial um, and then I cut this too short so I had to add a border on the bottom but it worked out okay it's all right so when we open this up on this side, I've got a six by six pocket that I used the six by six paper to mat, a uh, piece of chit chat and one of the doodle pops with the collection there. Over here, <coughs> excuse me, we've got one of the list pages from the collection, um, this little view masterpiece from the bits and pieces, uh, more chit chat and another doodle pop here. This is held closed with a magnet when you open it up. We've got a nice big photo spot here. We've got another list spot here. And then a pocket with some photo mats here. This sticker is from the This and That sticker sheet that is part of the paper collection. Um, and then these are from the odds and ends and the bits and pieces. And this collection is just a fun one with all the, the gold foiling in there. I absolutely love that. So back here, I've got another pocket back here. Um, and a couple of the tag cut apart pieces, pages. And then this is another piece of the tag cut aparts that I have just made into a nice little flip here. And there is a magnet underneath there as well. Um, here I've got a belly band along with an insert for the belly band with the um, gold foil dot acetate that is brand new to Doodlebug right now. A uh, piece of the odds and ends here, and then just some of the matching petite prints inside. And that's going to slide under that belly band. And the decoration on here is the odds and ends. And then this is actually in the middle here is a doodle pop. So you can see how there's that um, dimension there. Next page, we've got just layouts here and on the um, flap going out here. So I did use all of the little houses and the trees and things from um, the odds and ends pack and then these little pieces from the odds and ends pack and one of the puppy icons, which I love. Um, we've got pockets, pocket on top of a pocket. These little tags with the gold foil are from the bits and pieces pack as is this little um, like label thing and the flowers. And then again, I've just got some photo mats tucked in there. The back side here, I've got a pocket with a belly band on the top. And again, I've just got some photo mats tucked in there. This is from the um, this and that sticker sheet that's in the with the paper pack. Uh, these little hearts were with the cola shaker pop because those are fun. Um, and then in here, I've got just one of the cut aparts and a piece, leftover piece of the um, petite prints as just a little booklet to tuck in there. And then we've got the little um, typewriter doodle pop over here. And on the last page, we've got stacked diagonal pockets, another shaker pop here, and then just some of the cut aparts and a leftover um, petite print. And on the back inside cover, I've got a pocket, a waterfall with a, a pocket with a waterfall fall built on top of it. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, so I've got a couple of tags back there. I did mat this with the six by six. Um, this sticker, of course, is from the this and that as well. And then it's just your normal four by six um, waterfall. So there you go. 
that is the project. Uh, tutorial starts next. As always, thank you for watching. I appreciate you guys stopping by and let's get to the tutorial. Okay, so we're going to start with two pieces of chipboard, eight and a half by eight and a half. One piece, eight and a half by two and one quarter. You're going to cover the backs with tape. I'm going to start with my spine. So to wrap my spine, I need a piece of cardstock that is ten and a half by five and a quarter. I am going to use my one inch spacer at the top. I'm going to use my one and a half inch spacer on the side. off of my tape. Maybe. I cannot get hold of that one. Oh my gosh. Okay. Make sure that's fully up in that corner. And down we go. Okay. Done with the one and a half. I'm going to set that aside. To wrap the covers, we need two pieces, ten and a half by ten and a half. So I'm going to use one inch at the top and one inch on the sides. And again, this is completely covered in tape so that it goes down nice and smooth. I'm crying out loud. Okay, so again, I'm just going to use my spacers to lay that down, and then one more time, Spacers. I'm going to move my scoreboard for a minute. So, next thing I'm going to do is wrap my cardstock around my chipboard. So, I'm going to go ahead and just fold the cardstock around. Now let me put that away before I accidentally go to grab it and it's half and I cut my finger open on camera, which for the record would not be the first time. <laughs> I'm going to do this on all three chipboard pieces so it's ready to go. Nice little folded lines. I'm going to fold that in. I'm going to start the corner there and I'm going to miter out. Again, over here. Give you that. I'm going to fold this side in. Okay. All right. So for the spine, all we're going to fold over and adhere down are going to be these two end pieces. Oh, that's okay. Look very weird for some reason from this angle. Maybe it's that one. Yeah, that one looks weird too. Oh well, it's okay. Alright, so I am going to go ahead and run score tape on my ends.
And then I have a new little glue tool that I picked up the other day. So we're going to test it out. So this is a Nouveau bottle, but it is filled with art glitter. So what we do here is we just squeeze like so. Oh, it helps if I get the backing off. I'm going to come up here with my bone folder and over and down. And yes, this is a different bone folder as well um, that I picked up after using Bonnie's at, a, at an event here a couple weeks ago. And it was much easier on my poor hand that apparently it's not carpal tunnel. They don't know what it is. <laughs> um, this is actually my first time using this on a project. But it's got like this little silicone pad, so when you put it in a hold the whole, uh, stand, it just kind of sits there. And supposedly you don't have to keep taking the pen in and out as you're working. Oh my gosh, I love this bone holder. First time I've used it too. Okay, so we've got those folded over. I'm going to take this and I'm going to run right along the edge of that chipboard to define that edge. Okay, I actually want to look at something because this is a tutorial for, I do want to wrap it to the outside, that's what I was afraid of. So you may have remembered this project, this is the tutorial for this base, okay? And I did do it to the outside so I don't actually want to do that burnishing just like that. Not exactly. But that's okay. All right. So that's good. We can set that aside. And I'm going to come around. Oh, no, I need to miter these first. Get ahead of myself. So I'm going to do this the exact same way I just did it on the spine. still getting used to it. It's a little, it's definitely different, but quite honestly, like, I don't feel like my, it causes as much strain on my hand, um, which is the goal, goal here. Okay, so I'm going to burnish up along the side and then over and down. Oh, I like this bone this side. We're going to go up the side and then over and down. Yeah, because again, I can hold it where I'm not gripping it and pushing, that I'm kind of, I don't know, wow, I don't like that. I don't know if Tammy can get these. I'm going to have to ask her. Um, But I will say it was not, well, the good Teflon bone holders are never inexpensive, but this one is a little bit on the pricey side. But it's totally worth it because my hand is not killing me. Oh my gosh, okay. 
Sorry, totally sidetracked here. I should have tested this so I wasn't like going, oh my god, through this whole tutorial. Okay, and then, oh, I got another cool one. Where'd it go? It has like these little grooves in it. And I can just go along here and like really firm up those edges. Cool, huh? <laughs> and I know you can't tell on camera, but it really does make a, a difference on there. So, okay, let's miter this one. tape like always and then the backing off and I apologize my nails are extra long I'm trying to get back on a better schedule with them Been really like weird all summer. Okay. There. Honestly, I feel like I have better control of the glue with that. It's kind of amazing. Let me, because I do want to do similar matting on the spine. So what I did, so that I had that nice little wrapped spine, is I actually matted the back side of this before I attached everything together. And that seemed to work really, really well. So let me grab paper for that and I will be right back. Okay, so I've cut my piece that's going to go on here which I actually cut it too wide, so let me cut that down. Okay, so this was um, five and a quarter, so I'm actually only going, rather than going to five and one eighth, I'm going to five and three sixteenths, I apologize. Um, so now I just decide, have to decide if I want the rainbow side out. Or if I want the little heart side out. I really kind of like the rainbow side out, so I think that's what we're going to do. Okay. Oh, this is even better when you're holding it up like this. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put this down like so. Give that a minute to dry. I'm actually going to burnish it from the other side too, to make sure. And while we're waiting for that to dry, I'm going to come in here with my score tape again. And I'm going to 
put that on these outside edges. Okay, so what we're going to do now, because this is going to be wrapped to the outside, I'm going to line this up. Actually, I'm going to lay this in my scoreboard. I'm going to lay my cover piece in here and I'm going to slide that underneath. And I'm going to get one of my spacers that I'm going to use to make sure I get that like eighth of an inch gap in there. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's lift that up. up not quite we're crooked okay so we're gonna pull this back up very carefully <laughs> oh my gosh not my night, I'm telling you. There we go. That's perfect. All right. Off the edge of this, which normally would not happen, but because I managed to mess it up, that is exactly what happened. <laughs> okay. so I'm going to set this one in here, get it approximately where it needs to go. I'm going to try doing it just a teensy bit differently. for a minute. While that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and take my reinforcement piece that has also been completely covered in tape. And this is eight and three eighths by six and a quarter so that I've got a little bit of a gap on each side. I'm sorry, so I, that it goes over. Normally if the flaps were on the outside, it would go about half an inch on each side of those little wings on the spine, but it's on the outside. So that is not what will happen today. <laughs> oh, come on. There we go. All right. So I am going to turn this sideways so that I can see exactly where I want this. I'm go about right there. And then we are going to burnish. Okay. Come on my back side here and burnish. And then we are going to very carefully fold up and burnish that down into that crease. Something on the opposite side. And we're going to burnish in that crease. And there is our cover with our perfectly wrapped little spine piece here. And there we go. Okay, I'm going to set that aside for right now. And I'm going to grab the scoreboard. And we are going to do our hinge. Okay. So the hinge is eight by five and a half. With the half inch at the top of the scoreboard, we're going to score every 
half inch. Hold on, let me make sure I didn't do something weird on this. Because for some reason, I have some vague memory of doing something weird. I don't think so, but it's me, so you never know. No, that's half. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay, so half inch, one inch, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, and five. Now, Okay, voiceover time. I had a horrible time with this spot, this hinge. I don't know what I was doing wrong, but what I'm doing here is I am just going through and I am folding all of the pieces of my hinge so that they are pre-folded, ready to go for me to glue them down. For some reason, I don't know if I was cutting it crooked. I don't know if I was scoring it crooked, but I was having an absolutely horrible time with this, this hinge. So um, you're gonna have four pages total. So I'm just getting these folded, ready to go, um, which I've been doing lately actually, just because it does seem to make it a little bit easier when you're doing your, um, your hinge, just to make sure you're not gluing something in the wrong place because I literally did that on a project last week. So, um, so that's all set, ready to go. So now I'm just gonna go along on the back side here and I'm gonna glue uh, in those valleys from the backside to make the hinges. Ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and put it down. Um, I think I am gonna mat underneath it, so for now I'm actually just gonna leave this like this. Let's go ahead and build our pages so that they're ready to go, and then I will find paper. So for the pages, four sheets, eight by eight, four eight by eight and a half. Okay, with the eight and a half at the top of the scoreboard, we're going to score half an inch. gonna miter these. And I'm gonna do them two at a time. And we're just gonna miter. Miter. Okay. So then I'm going to Burnish. Okay, 
So there's one ready to go. And what I'm going to do is take my other page. I'm going to line these up and then I'm going to put glue down that tab. Okay, so I'm tapping them on the table, line them up, and then pinching. Okay, and set it aside. And we're just going to repeat the same thing with the other three. Oh my God. Not listening to my own directions, that's what I'm doing. Okay, so those are ready to go into the book. Let me find some batting for that spine and I'll be right back. Okay, so I have my matting piece here. I'm just going to go ahead and is in. Okay, next we can put our pages in. Um, but I'm going to give that a second to dry first. Okay, so I gave that a few minutes to dry. What I'm going to do is get my pages all turned the right way. So here's how we're going to do this. Okay, I'm going to lay those flat. <laughs> They're not going to say flat. It's okay. All right. So what I'm going to do? So I'm going to line this up like so. I'm going to fold it over like this. Fold this over here. Make sure I'm even top and bottom, and then I'm going to pull it back just about a sixteenth of an inch. Okay, like so. Now leave that one as is. We will come and glue them shut in just a second. Okay. Same thing. Over, over. Line it up, wiggle it back. Make sure I'm lined up. Even with the page behind it. And burnish that down. Okay. Same thing again. Get that one ready. Over and down. 
down, wiggle it back, make sure we're even, burnish it down. Now, in case you're wondering why I'm not gluing these yet, that's just in case, because Lord knows I've done it before, that I get them all in and realize they're crooked, something's off, whatever. This way, <laughs> it's much easier to get them out and salvageable than if I glue them in completely, then it's a matter of pulling out the entire hinge and the pages and everything else and basically starting this whole section over. So, because we don't wanna really have to do that. And there we go. Ta-da! Okay. So I'm going to flip back this way. That one is not completely glued on this one side. Looks like I did not get very much glue on there. But that's okay. Alright, so I'm going to open this up. I'm going to put glue down this hinge and along the bottom. Close it up burnish it down. Okay, pull it to the next page, open it up, same thing again. easier than fighting with these. Okay. Over, down. Lightly burnish. And there's our pages in our book ready to go. Okay. I'm going to gather up our flips and flaps and things and I'll be right back. Okay, so let's work on our inside elements. First up, we've got our front inside cover. So our cardstock for this is gonna be six and one eighth by 12 and six and one eighth by seven eighths, okay? We'll start with my six and one eighth by 12 at the top. And we are gonna score this at half an inch and seven and a half. Okay. I'm going to miter on the bottom. Okay. And for our other piece, so six and one eighth by seven. Something seems off. Oh, six and one eighth by seven and one eighth. What did I say? Six and one eighth by seven and one eighth. Okay, no, we're good. All right, seven and one eighth at the top of the scoreboard. You're gonna score at half an inch on each side. Okay. That you are going to miter. going to assemble this like so and then it will go in the book okay so what I'm gonna do is I am gonna put 
glue on this bottom half inch tab. My cat is going to fling himself against something over here. So I'm going to put that down like that. Okay. And then I can come and do my sides. and then fold over our closure. Okay. This one is going to get a magnet as soon as I figure out where my tape went so I can adhere it. So, take my tape, and go burn down. Okay, like so. And then that is going to go in our book. So, I did. Because our front and back cover elements um, both need matted before you put them down. So I did go ahead and do that. Okay. I'm just going to center that up. And that's in. Okay. Next up back inside cover we've got a waterfall so I have four pieces that are four and a half by six I have a closure piece that is two by five and one eighth and then I've got a six by six base that we're going to build the waterfall on so I'm going to put my four and a half at the top of the scoreboard and score it half an inch And then I'm going to take my five and one eighth by, what was it, one and three quarters? No, by two. Haha. -ha. Five and one eighth by two. I'm going to score this at half an inch and at five eighths. Okay. This one we are going to miter. The other ones for the waterfall we are not. Okay. So. First thing, I'm going to go ahead and fold my score lines. And I'm just going to fold them just with my fingers at this point. I'm not going to burnish them yet until we actually get it down on our base. So, six by six base, super easy. I'm going to start at the top and line it up. Okay. And then the next one. And the next one. that one I did not want to do it that way I wanted to flip that over and I will 
lost my paper towel somewhere over here. I wanted to flip that actually so that it adheres to this. So we're actually going to layer those two up because what that gives us is we don't have that little tab hanging out down here. There it is. It's here somewhere. But it matters because this is now mostly dry, but that's okay. All right. So now I will go ahead and fold and burnish. Closure here, maybe, <laughs> if I can hang on to it. I'm going to line it up like so. Get that down, and then I will push back to get that little eighth inch gusset down. Now, we're going to do another magnet here. Of course, if you don't want to use magnets anywhere that I'm using them, you can use seam binding or ribbon or swing closures or whatever you choose to do. But I am quite fond of the magnets, so <laughs> I do end up using them quite a bit. Okay, so I'm going to put that about right there. Get my next little piece of tape. down like so. Okay. All right. And this is going to go in the back. So why this is on a base is because we are only going to put glue on three sides so that the top of this is going to be a pocket. Again, we're just going to center this up and put it down. Okay, so then maybe that goes there. All right, so next up, and I think I'm going to have to grab some more magnets because used quite a few of them. So let me grab some more really quickly. One second. Okay, so front of page one, we have got two flaps and a pocket. So our flaps are going to be three and a half by eight and eight by six and a half. Okay. So with the six and a half at the top of the scoreboard, we are going to score this at half an inch. And with the three and a half at the top of the scoreboard, we're going to score this at half an inch. Okay. Our pocket is going to be four by nine. And we're going to score it on two short sides and one long side at half an inch. Like so. And then we'll go ahead and miter. They feed you yet. And then on the pockets, we're going to go right across where those score lines intersect. Oh, I know, you're just going to die of starvation. We're going to miter our flaps. Like so. And let me. Double check 
how I put this in here. That's what I thought. All right. Is what I thought it was. Okay. So we're gonna grab our book. Oops, not a color yet. The book. And we are gonna take our big flap first. Fold that score line and burnish. Apparently I'm going to have to pause here in a second and go feed the cat because I don't know where everybody else went. And we're going to put this down on the back of this page, or the, towards the spine. That's what I'm trying to say, towards the spine. We're going to open that up and we're going to adhere our pocket. So I'm going to go ahead and fold and burnish that. Okay, so I'm going to put down the long edge first. Gonna go right in here like so. And we'll fold it back, fold in our sides, and glue those down. one we're going to go ahead and fold and burnish. I'm going to go over that just a little bit to make sure. And this is going to go on the other side. is going to close in like so and then this is going to go here and we're going to do some magnets. Okay. I know Gus. Hold on a second. I know. I don't know where they all went. So this one is going to be a little bit tricky because it is kind of close to this edge here. So we're going to start on the bottom piece. And we're going to go about a quarter of an inch in from the edge. I usually would go in a little bit further, but we're not really going to have that option on this because of the way the page is sized. One. Okay, and we're just going to close that down and pick those up. Okay, all right, back of page two. I'm sorry, back of page one. So this one. When I had done my um, Over the Rainbow album, I had done kind of something a little bit different with one of these tag sheets. So what I did is I cut it. So I had three tags that I liked the fronts, which, yes, this one says happy birthday. I will cover that with a sticker of some kind. I'm going to score this. And you might not be exactly at four inches, so you're just going to have to kind of look and see so that you're scoring it right here along the bottom, okay? Which really, you could do it this way so it flips up, except those are turned the wrong way, so this is still going to end up flipping down, okay? So I'm going to go ahead 
and I'm gonna cut out the little dog ear pieces on the top of the tag. We will end up putting some matting on the inside here to hang, hide the, the magnets that are going to go on the inside. But when we put this in, what we're going to do is we only want glue on three sides. Because again, we're leaving that top open as a pocket. Okay. And I did it a little ways up from the bottom, about a quarter of an inch up from the bottom. And then just centered. Okay. So, for the magnets. Bear with me because I need to just double check on this. So on this one originally, I split my tags, okay? And what I did to hide the magnets is I cut that little tag topper piece off of another set of the tags and put it and, and put those on the tops of those tags. This one, I'm not going to split so that they each open individually. It was cute, but I didn't love it so I'm not gonna do that okay and this is where I'm talking about we will end up matting something on the inside here that will hang our that will hide the magnet that we end up using on the inside so because we're not gonna split those tags apart and you absolutely could but it's you know more magnets that you're gonna have to use to close this which you know you absolutely could do if you wanted I do not want to do that this time. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my first one right there. Figure out which way my second one needs to go. So, and then just the usual trick to push that down, and there we go. Super easy. Okay, front of page two. Wait a minute, page two, oh, it's because this got stuck in the wrong place. We're gonna use some acetate here in a second. Front of page two, you need a piece of cardstock three and a half by nine. You're going to score this at half an inch on each end with the nine inches at the top. You're going to go ahead and miter this. on my belly band and we'll go ahead and just center this up so I'm going to do one side and then I will do the other okay then I have a 7 by 12 inch piece of the gold dot acetate that I absolutely love. And we are going to score this at 6 inches. So when scoring acetate, in general, you usually have to go over it a few times to get that crease to take. This is even more so with this heavy, heavy acetate like this. It does take a couple of passes to go over it. Okay. So 
I'm going to fold this in half, make sure everything's nice and lined up where I want it. I do have it so that the gold is on the outside, um, and then you can add photo mats or whatever on the inside of this. Inside and outside, that is. And we're going to burnish that down, and then that is going to go as our insert in here. Okay. I am going to take it back out for now until after I get this all matted and whatnot, but that's what's going to go in there. Okay. Let me flip my notebook page so I have my good notes. <laughs> okay, back of page two, super simple. Whoops. We just have a seven and a half by eight inch piece to do a flap. And we are going to put the seven and a half. Hold on. Yes, seven and a half at the top of the scoreboard. Score this at half an inch. And miter. This one, I think I did do another magnet closure on this one. Um, for now, I'm actually going to leave it because I think I'm going to end up ultimately when I mat doing a ribbon, ribbon closure here because it is just going to be kind of some bigger like layout pages. So I'm going to leave that as is for now. Okay, front of page three, we have two pockets stacked on top of each other. So one of them will need to be matted before you put the second pocket down which I did not cut mattering for that. So I will probably do that in just a second here. Okay, so we have got, the main pocket is four and three quarters by nine. The little pocket is three by seven. And just normal pocket scoring. So two short sides and one long side at half an inch. doing and then where the score lines intersect I'm just gonna cut straight through and same thing here and then okay so I'm gonna go ahead and fold my score lines on the big pocket those over and down and then I will burnish that down okay now let me see so I need those same polka dots again because quite honestly I love it yes this is the back side of that little list page
but I have another one of those, so I will do something with those here in a little while. All right, let's grab our second pocket that goes on top. We're gonna fold and burnish and burnish and burnish. that I am just going to kind of center up on here. You could do it all the way at the bottom. I liked having it kind of in the middle there. And then we'll get the sides. Okay, there we go. On to the back of page three. And again, super simple. This, this one really doesn't have a whole lot of complicated things in it um, and that's on purpose because sometimes you know we would like a big book that's easy all right page three we have a pocket that is five and a half by nine and then we have a belly band that is one and three quarters by nine so I'm going to start two short sides one long side because this is going to be a side loading pocket belly band you're gonna do half an inch on the ends I know Gus just a minute almost done okay I know and for the record he talks like this all the time but when he's thinking he's starving to death he's that much worse okay And then across the bottom. Okay. And we will fold and burnish. This is going to go on the outside edge of this page. So as always, I'm going to do my long piece first. It just makes it easier to get the pockets down where they need to go. And then we'll do the sides. belly band is just going to get centered up on the top. Okay. And centered. front is super easy we're gonna have a little pocket down here and then a belly band in the middle for that you need a piece that is two and a quarter by nine and one and three quarters by nine okay the two and a quarter we're gonna score half inch turn half inch again turn half inch and if you're wondering why it was because this gave me a way to use the border strips and make them cute and super easy so I'm gonna go ahead and miter on the belly band and the pocket the bottom, miter the top, okay, okay, I'm going to go ahead and 
And again, with pockets, I always start on whatever side only has one place to glue. And I will put that down first. then I can very easily flip this back, get my sides, okay, then our little belly band which is just basically to hold whatever, you know, larger items we put in the pocket, in the pocket, because it is a rare, very shallow pocket. I'm just gonna put that about halfway between the top of the pocket and the top of the page. So super easy. that. Last page. So this we are going to do a an angled pocket. Okay so I have a seven and a half by seven and a half piece of cardstock. I'm going to score this at half an inch on two sides. Actually no we're going to go ahead and do it on all four sides because I think I'm going to make a slight change here. Okay, so this is scored. Now, I need a different trimmer. Okay, so I am going to lay this in here on an angle and I am going to line up the points with the little guide wire in this trimmer and cut. Okay, so there's one pocket. Now this one I'm going to line up. I'm going to come over so that that cut line is on the one inch line in the trimmer and I'm going to take that piece off and throw it away. And now I have got stacked angled pockets. Okay, so first thing we're going to do so we're going to cut through this bottom corner, okay? I am going to fold the smaller one up first and burnish so that I can see where it is I need to miter at the top, okay? So once I can see how much is hanging off, I can kind of angle my scissors appropriately to cut that down, okay? This I'm going to go ahead and glue on here before we put it in the book. Okay, then I can fold and burnish down and then do my same little trick to miter the tops of the pocket. Okay, side's good. Side will be in just a second here. Okay. All right. So then you just have to decide, is it going in the inside or the outside? And I think I'm going to the outside this time. And in this case, I am going to do glue on both sides because this one's an easy enough one to put down and line up. Okay, there we go. All of our 
pages and whatnot are in. Now it's just time to mat and decorate and finish that whole section off. And then I will come back and we will do the cover. 